Hello and welcome to City Beat, your source for the latest news and information here in the city of Rocky Mount. I'm Media Relations Specialist Jesse Nunnery and on today's episode I actually have two very special guests. To the right of me is Arts Curator at the Imperial Center for the Arts and Sciences, Allison Wiedrich. And to my left is Tanya Jefferson Lynch. She is the founder of the Black Light Project. And today we're going to talk about the Black Light Project. Um, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you much for having All us. right. <laughs> Allison, I'm going to start with you, actually. Um, back in 2018 and 2019, you did a lot of work to bring the Black Light Project here. So what was it about the project that made you think it'd be an excellent fit for the city of Rocky Mount and the Imperial Center? Wow, that's a, that's a big question. So I think first and foremost, it was Tanya. You know, we met sort of serendipitously. She was here for another event and we connected. And so I just really loved that the energy that she brought to the project. Um, more importantly, I just love the mission of the project. You know, shining a positive light on unsung heroes of our community is something I absolutely wanted to be on board with. So it was, it was a done deal from the minute I met her and heard about the project. And since then, we've had uh, 13 subjects, is it? Yes, we have 13 subjects mm -hmm. in Rocky Mount, and they were on display spring 2020 during a exhib exhibition that we had here in uh, the Art Center. And then now there are eight banners throughout the city of Rocky Mount, funded by the Z. Smith Reynolds Inclusive Public Art Grant. And that Z. Smith Reynolds Grant was really important in getting the uh, project out to the city facilities and getting our subjects out. I know yes. the public has probably seen them at Rocky Mount Mills mm -hmm. and here in front of the Imperial Center and other city facilities. So what do you think that has done to um, help aid the project? Oh man, so much. Um, all in total, we were given about $60,000 by Z. Smith Reynolds to make this happen. Not only the banners, but the marketing for it, uh, all the photography and time used for it. Um, and then, of course, now we're in phase, I guess, three of our project. And I'll let Tanya talk more about that, but now we're doing digital engagement and we wouldn't have been able to do any of it without Z. Smith Reynolds. And Tanya, I'll turn my attention to the Emmy-winning Tanya Jefferson Lynch. Um, the Black Light Project did win an Emmy. Can you uh, tell us how that felt to be recognized for, for your work? Of course. So I, I do want to make sure I'm clear with the Emmy. So we were featured in 2019 in a PBS News special uh, filmed by Jonathan Duran. And he's amazing. He's still my friend. In fact, he's still working on some Z. Smith Reynolds things with us so there was a second opportunity to work with him but anyway he came to Greenville North Carolina and he spent about a week with us and put together a program and we actually worked together it was really cool and that interstitial you know which you know all about that interstitial won an Emmy and we were able to be there and hear our name called the Black Light Project so it is a documentary on the documentary that won the Emmy and I was very proud of that moment. It was really cool because my husband and I went to Tennessee. We got all dressed up, got really fancy and we got to hear that, you know, our names called. It was just really, really cool but I got to give props to Jonathan Duran. Um, being a part of that work has just been amazing for exposure for us, amazing for exposure for good things that are happening in the black community and with black males and great conversations. So it's meant a lot not only for the work that we do, but just in general talking about um, messaging and messages of black males, especially in southern states and in the southeast. Right. And this is your second time doing the project. You did a project in Greenville to start. Is that right? Absolutely. And now you've been in Rocky Mount for about two years. So what have you learned about this community and these subjects particularly? Okay. So I am from Greenville, from Pitt County, which is 45 minutes away. And so I've been to Rocky Mount, you know, when I was younger, I used to come to Rocky Mount. So I'm not, uh, Rocky Mount is not unfamiliar to me, but I didn't know in this way. So when I came, I knew there was this beautiful place, Imperial Center, and I was just kind of hanging out for something else, as um, Allison stated. And along the way, I've learned just so much rich history, like even literally, like maybe a couple weeks ago, about the Black Business District. I didn't know about that. You know, I didn't, very early on, I knew Dr. Martin Luther King had given the I Had a Dream speech, but I had no idea where it was located, and it was an honor to stand in that gym and know that prior to what we know as you know, the March on Washington, that this had taken place um, in this very intimate forum, now that we think about you know, the size of that crowd versus the crowd in Rocky Mountain, that took place here. And it was really amazing to understand this rich history here 
and that um, I remember Rocky Mountain being City on the Rise. That's how old I am. And I don't know if that's still the, the logo or not. Is, has it changed? It's changed a little bit. It's yeah. changed yeah, a, little a little bit? bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was City on the Rise, uh, you know, years and years ago, right? And I know that. But now I really, like, I want that logo back. Listen to me, City Council. But I love it because it's, it's like for me, I'm going, like, this place is super dope. Like, it's so much like amazing action happening here and meeting the guys really opened my I believe in project I believe it's a national project I believe it's an international project I believe that with my whole heart but as you go from city to city you see why it's national international it is each pocket of brothers and black men and black people who are working collaboratively to make their communities better, safer, stronger, you know, to, to bring culture and business and life. And that's what I've learned here. And it's just been really, really amazing to get to know um, each man who's a part of that in their own way. It's been really, really amazing for me. And now we are entering a YouTube phase. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that where uh, you have one of the subjects actually interviewing all the other subjects yes. about life and the project? Yes, absolutely. So the cool thing about the YouTube series is we wanted to just talk about things that black men aren't typically asked about. You know, we, we the whole mission of the project is to move away from like negative narratives to positive narratives. Because here's the deal, right? Black men are talking about love. Black men are talking about creativity. Black men are talking about businesses and, and what mental health. They are talking about advocacy. They are having these conversations every single day. Unfortunately, the world doesn't always see it that way. And so what I wanted to do in this show is have a black man talk to his community partners, his partners in this project, his, his partners and brothers in life, and just have a candid conversation that's lighthearted, not too heavy, it's lighthearted, it's quick. We only get about 10 minutes to do it. But it was important that people who viewed it saw black men as like, it's kind of weird, except, exceptional and average at the same time, right? And then we can share it and share it. Please share it, share it. <laughs> and the world gets to see how like commonplace these things are like, yeah, I talk just like that. And yes, Mo Lewis is a wonderful, wonderful host. I'm so excited to have him. He's a part of the project. It's just important to really bring home to people, it bring into people's home, their laptops and phones that, hey, black guys, like regular dudes are not like, you know, what the media presents us, so. And when do those episodes uh, appear on YouTube? Yes, they're all, they come on Thursdays mm -hmm. at nine o'clock and I will have a little, lead up every single week and we'll do it in case you missed it that'll go out tomorrow in case you missed it and we'll have the previous episode so check it out every thursday for the next um, 10 weeks and we get to highlight not only will we highlight the men who are part of the banner project we'll also highlight um black business owners in the area and also we have a black art artist initiative and we'll highlight a few other artists well, I applaud you too for the collaboration that you've done over the last couple of years with the Black Light Project and bringing it to our city. So thank you. No, thank you. All it's right. Been fun. <laughs> All right. Well, that is it for this episode of City Beat. Uh, please check out the Black Light Project on YouTube as well as our YouTube page, City TV 19. If you've missed any of the episodes, they are available on our City TV 19 YouTube page as well as our podcast, Anchor by Spotify. I'm Jesse Nunnery, and we'll see you next time.